Hey guys, I'm with PCP Media. Um, I am out here, boots on the ground at Slate Ridge. Uh, I've met a few guests that I invited out here. Uh, I've uh, briefly ran into uh, the Associated Press who is here uh, to take photos. Um, we'll see what interesting story they put out there. Um, so I'm gonna try to uh, meet with some of the people here. I actually invited some people out to get to know them as well. Um, but I'm gonna try to get some photos, try to get some videos, try to get some interviews. Um, I mean, I mean, this is just a picnic, so it is a low key event, but uh, there will be some firearms shooting and the range has legally been shut down. He was legally supposed to tear everything down. And I can tell you, ain't nothing been torn down. So that's pretty, pretty awesome uh, that we have some very uh, uh, civil disobedience going on. So uh, I haven't had a chance really to talk with Daniel yet because he was already talking with the Associated Press. So I will be going around and trying to talk with folks. So keep watching videos, guys. All right, so the gentleman in the red, he's AP. Huh. Armory barn, looks like an FFL dealer. It's another little stand out here. Get some kids playing. Can't really read that sign. Uh, we have some people just uh, eating. Oh, yeah. So over there is where the food is. All right, guys. So uh, I'm here with uh, Jamie, right? Yes. Jamie? Okay. So uh, I guess uh, your group is Armory Barn. Armory yes. Barn. Yep. So uh, so who are you? What brought you out here, man? All right. So Armory Barn is uh, we specialize in Cerakote coatings. We're the only Cerakote coatings in Southern Vermont. We're the only black minority owned FFL in the state of Vermont. Um, we're here out to support uh, Slate Ridge, uh, Daniel. Um, it's a great place for family and kids. We, we've been coming here for some, quite some time now and uh, just want to come out and uh, have a good time and meet some new people. Right on. So, I mean, I guess this is uh, some of your work right here? Yes, yep. We do uh, say, we specialize in, in Cerakote. Um, want to show it off? Yeah, sure. So, from something simple. To FDE on this on this AR forty seven here to something a little little louder in color um, for the ladies we have this Hellcat we did in uh, Perplexed it's a newer color from Cerakote and then we also get into doing movie themes so I didn't see one out there yet so we jumped on it and uh, we did uh, Mandalorian so from Star Wars we did uh, Baby oh, yeah. Yoda Mandalorian on there oh yeah yeah. Yep. You, you might not be able to see it. I, I'll try to get a photo uh, to show you guys to put it up on here. But I mean, you can definitely see it says Mandalorian right here. You got his logo. You got a nice uh, distressed look over it. Nice. Yes. So went from uh, doing auto body by trade, painting cars, restoring cars to uh, to now doing firearms. So keeping the passion of the finishing, just right moving into a different uh, area in business. Right on. How long have you been doing uh, this? Um, we're a new FFL. We got, I've been seracoding on, on guns. We just, just about this, this past year here, um, doing, been painting, been painting behind the paint gun for 21 years. Cool. Since I was 14. Um, I own a body shop in Connecticut and, uh, we moved up to Vermont, a little more, more peace and, uh, freedom. So, uh, yeah, we're up here now and, uh, just, uh, try and enjoy life. It's not a pandemic doing something good. Absolutely. Try to support the family. Now, yeah, and with uh, uh, supporting uh, Slate Ridge, you know, obviously you're out here and get to, I mean, obviously this gets to be a little free marketing for you, but you get to uh, be out here, part of the community, support right. it. So um, what got you uh, into, uh, you know, um, how'd you meet Daniel and Slate Ridge and start uh, becoming part yeah, of Yeah, so I, uh, we, don't, we don't live too far away. We're only about 15 minutes from here. We ended up, uh, I ended up meeting some locals and they told me about the range and mm -hmm. I came down, started shooting and met Daniel and I took a few classes here too and... And, uh, and then I became a uh, range safety officer. So I come down, help with events here as well um, to keep safety on the range for, for, okay. for kids and adults. Um, it's what we should, I mean, more so we should be doing is promoting more gun safety than infringing on gun rights, which I believe, yes, you know, absolutely. you have absolutely. so many, you have millions of gun owners. We should have more, more gun safety promoted um, to safe handling of uh, fire weapons and firearms. You know? Now, how'd you, uh, how did you personally uh, get involved in the firearms community uh, as, as a whole? Like what made you go, I like things that turn a money into loud noise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I never actually intended on ever owning a gun shopper. I just, I've always loved like the AR based, uh, in the form of a firearm. And I just, um, 
I just got into shooting and I bought a few guns and a few more and then started building and I said, you know what? I'm going to make a business out of this. So I got federally licensed and uh, and went through that process and uh, we're good to go. Got you know the licensing, the insurance and whatnot and um, just uh, wanted to come out of this, this, this you know, bad couple of years here, you know, um, and, and just do something good and support the family and do something I enjoy as well, you know? Now, that's that's awesome. That's actually part of what this is. Uh, me with uh, me being the, the guy behind the camera is, uh, um, you know, I've, I've had the, my, you know, my little YouTube gun channel going for, right. for a few years, but, you know, I saw like stuff like this, like, okay, you know, it's time I do outreach and start getting involved right. with our community. So, I mean, this is definitely, definitely something that, you know, this is like the greater firearms family, if you will. So it, it's awesome seeing uh, everyone out here today, and I'm going to try to get you know, as many people who want to talk cool. as possible. I'm awesome. respecting everyone's privacy as much as possible, too. Awesome. So, hey, man, I really appreciate yeah, you. Pleasure meeting you. Me. You too. You too, man. So we are we are now live. Oh, oh recording. Wow. Little red dot. Perfect. So, uh, all right. So, uh, Jesse, uh, you are Vermont State Militia. Did I get the, the name correct? You did, yes. Awesome. I have your little flyer. <laughs> Terrific. Right here. So, uh, so you guys, local militia, uh, you're their spokesperson. So, I uh, have been told I am the spokesperson. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, uh, well, a woman over there said uh, you were. So, uh, I always trust women because they are the bosses. That's it. So, uh, that much. <laughs> so, um, so how long have you been with the, with the Vermont militia? So, I'm one of the founders of the organization. We were formed okay. in 2019 um, to get away from the national militia. Does that make sense? Ab absolutely, I, I get it. Um, so, uh, so you guys have been around for a couple years now. Yep. You're one of the founders. Very cool. That already gets rid of like multiple questions. Oh, perfect. So, uh, okay. So you found it because you didn't want to be part of any national movements. I, I, I can understand that, especially with the way the news goes. You know, sometimes it's like we want to do our, you know, our own thing, yeah. our own identity. So, so, uh, so what is y'all's identity? Like, like, who are you guys? More or less, we're a bunch of, I mean, like-minded individuals, patriots, lovers of the Second Amendment, constitutionalists is a large. Okay. A large portion of it. A lot of people like to put a political bias behind it. We're not. We are not Democrats. We're not Republicans. We okay. love the Constitution, mm -hmm. and with this organization in particular, the Second Amendment. Understood. Understood. So, uh, so um, what what got you guys involved with Slate Ridge? Um, more or less, uh, we had yeah. we had talked to a member. We were looking for places where we could train in a reality based touch of Slate Ridge here. Um, mm -hmm. We had been training at rotting gun clubs throughout the state, but. <laughs> Their capabilities didn't match what we wanted to do for training. Yep. And so one of the members yeah, says, hey, okay, man, I hey, know this guy Daniel you. at this place called Slate yeah. Ridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go out and check it out. And we've been coming out here ever since. Nice. Yep. So uh, what, like one year, two years since you guys found it? Or a year and a half or so? About a year and a half. Okay, so I mean pretty much since you guys were, you know, just getting the That's walk, right. uh, crawl, walk, run, run phase. Yep. Okay, cool. So, um... Uh, obviously, I don't want to, you know, blow your uh, your opsec or anything. So if the questions get too much, like, just, oh, I got it. Know. So, um, <laughs> so uh, basically, like, like, so how many of you guys uh, make up the the Vermont State Militia? So our numbers have climbed, fallen. It all depends on the political climate. Um, I mean, at one point in time, we had 200 members. Okay. Um, out of those 200, maybe 70 that would have come to training. Got it. There's a large disconnect between people who are actually interested in social media warriors. Yes. And we try to feed the social media warriors away. We don't yep. we don't want them. We want people that'll come and give their we don't have dues. We ask for your time. Okay. We ask for your good mentality. We want people to show up and become part of this tight knit group that we have. Mm -hmm. I'd say right now currently we have under thirty members that are dedicated, show up to trainings and that we consider part of that tight knit thing. I mean that's a platoon size element you have there. Yeah. So that's uh not not too shabby. I mean, no. three fire teams minus, yeah. you know, but uh, that's that's pretty squared away numbers. Also take into consideration, too, I mean, this is from the southernmost reaches of the state up to the northernmost parts of the NEK. You know, it's, yeah. it's so they're spread out. Um, we've used Slate Ridge as mm -hmm. our localized area um, mm -hmm. for a good portion of the last year and a half or so. Um, of course, given the current climate here, um, yep. it's it's become convoluted. Yes. Yeah. So uh, there's definitely the uh, the the political uh, uh, fight, which you know I saw. What initially got me interested in the story was I saw what uh, the New York uh, Times had put out, and then I started seeing the Vermont Digger. Yeah. I saw some videos on YouTube. Um, so 
Uh, and that that's actually brings you know that I interviewed Dan on back out here today to kind of just do follow up and kind of you know he let me get to come out here. I haven't even had a chance to eat yet or talk to him, but uh, well, we'll, we'll get great. there. Obviously, <laughs> I, well, hey, I like food. You can look at me and tell uh, too much, but um, so. So yeah, I mean, with the with the political I- environment, uh, uh, with things that happen here, is there anything you'd like to comment uh, on that? Um, I mean, I had actually spoken to the New York Times. She was here earlier. Um, I don't believe she's here now. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess if there was a message that I wanted to get out there about the Vermont State Militia, it is that we are not a stereotypical militia in the sense of what people would think if they. We're familiar with the three percenters movement. Are you familiar with them? Ever uh, heard of them? Yes, yes, I'm. I'm familiar with they are, and uh, I mean, yeah, they do have a, a, a reputation, uh, uh, a not good one. Right, right. And so, um, as I'd mentioned to some reporters earlier, we do not affiliate with them. I personally think that they're a fucking joke. Um, you can. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm, I don't. Unless you want me to edit. No, out no. Poems, I mean, you uh, put it right in there. Um, yeah. I think that what they are doing is damaging to the Second Amendment community. I believe okay. that. In terms of militia groups being what they actually are, they are a terrible, um, they're not a militia. I, I used yeah. this term earlier, they're a media militia. And so, and so, I mean, you've got a bunch of people who have bad attitudes, poor yeah. firearm handling, because I've seen their videos, it's awful. And they have no intentions of actually benefiting the communities that they live in. I mean, what, what are they doing? I mean, they're not... They're not a, an organized group. They're they're a bunch of people that are taking orders from somebody a thousand miles away from them, and it's I mean it all. I mean, it's not anything that I want to be part of. Sure, so, sure. So the group that I had been a part of before I've been in militias for six seven years, and the groups that I was in beforehand it was the Vermont Lightfoot, uh, the AP Three Percenters, and they were all somewhat tied to a national level group, and mm-hmm. and so. And so while it was nice to have the support, you know, in numbers, what were we doing? We weren't benefiting yeah. the state of Vermont. We weren't helping our constituents in the communities we live in. We weren't doing any of that. We yeah. were listening to some guy that lived, you know, way out west. And, mm-hmm. and he doesn't have this state's interests in mind either. Mm-hmm. So we decided we were going to get rid of all that. We were just going to, you know, me and a couple other founders, we were just like, we're done we want a group in the state of Vermont that focuses on the needs of Vermonters, and especially those, you know, this town in particular, Paulette, and I'll say this on the record, is full of racist, inbred fucking pricks, and I hope you put that out there. Uh, th- this whole interview is going to be uncut. Terrific, right, because um, I've seen the backstories of how this whole situation came to fruition, and it really, it started with Daniel's gate being torn down. That's not neighborly. One thing led to another, you know, what's that saying, the stone rolling downhill or something. Mm -hmm. It got worse and it got worse and it got worse. And it's evolved into the situation that we find ourselves in today where, I mean, it's a shame, but the police have been called to this facility a a couple of times, not only on the behest of the neighbors, but also from the owner here calling the police from problems with the neighbors. So, I mean, I've spoken to reporters with the Vermont Digger before. Mm -hmm. Um, they they did not write the story with the information that I had provided to them. It was a very slanted, very politically biased story. The reporter did get out a few key pieces of information that I had really hoped would be included in the article, which was about the this whole facility is based around safety. Um, and that's a big misconception that a lot of people pick up, is that it's, it's hillbillies shooting out in the woods. Well, they never seem to mention that these burns are above federal standards. Everything down there, I mean, we've got the gates closed. You know, there's there's signage up in the parking lot, on the road, out to the gate. Everything is well labeled. There's live firing going on here. When the red flag is up, the range is hot. Yep. And, and so, so for this facility to get wrapped up in you know, that mentality of uh, there not being any safety around here and just like a unregulated type of crazy facility. I mean, it couldn't be farther from the truth. And and so the people that are against the facility, I feel have never actually come out here to see what it has to offer. I mean, we have a lot of people, I've spoken to Daniel before, that come out here and their only intention is to jam him up, not tell the story as it's portrayed. And, you know, you, you can't really do anything 
I mean, right. Yeah, that's well. That's part of the reason I came out here is to, uh, you know, make sure there is a, a fair side, even if it is just by a small-time YouTuber. Uh, <laughs> but people can find it if they go when people decide that they want to Google Slate Ridge on, yep. on YouTube. Uh, they're they're gonna they'll find that what the video is gonna be out there and they'll get to see another point of view. Yeah. Um, and then they can go and they can look at the other stuff too that's that's been put out and then they can make their their own fair decision. Yeah. But uh, I mean, as just a two way channel, uh, you know, I saw a sign came out here and I wanted to check this out. Yeah. And uh, do you uh, do you have anything else you'd like to uh, say before we wrap up? Um, I love you all <laughs> and. Cheers from Vermont. I, I don't know. No worries, man. Hey, no, thank you for your time. Not Seriously. A Not a problem. Uh, yeah. Good. All right. Hey, uh, so we are live. Daniel, nice to uh, be back here and see you again. Welcome back. Uh, Welcome back. Dude, you're a hard person to get in touch with. You've got so many people here uh, you, chatting you. it up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what's happened since we left? Well, we, we lost in, in the uh, Vermont um, Superior Court. You know, the judge deemed that uh, my permit for the school was null and void, so he voided the permit. Um, he was nice enough to give me the $400 back for the permitting fee, but he also didn't take into consideration all the years of paying an assessed value on that building that now has to come down. So <clears throat> I think the, the verbiage and the ideological view from the judge was very prejudicial, right? Um, you know demolish the buildings i mean who uses that word right, right. i mean that's a very inflammatory term right i mean i, I mean, think we could have used yeah. a little different verbiage it's but but you know demolish the buildings yep. um bulldoze the berms down and leave the land come on now you're you're yeah. an american soldier right you're gonna leave your land no it's right. i mean the way i see things is uh uh it's it's your land right. uh, who's to tell you what you can do on it right um and so I'm just going to tilt this just a little bit. Uh, I'll edit that out. But uh, just trying to keep you in frame. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty crazy telling me you can't do anything, not even give you a recourse to uh, well, to, well, to make it in, in permission with them. Exactly. So so I have another gentleman that that's next in line. Um, the town hates him. Um, you know, he has a competitive business to yeah. one of the board member's sons, okay. which is he's on the board too. So that's nepotism. He's next, and they're asking him because his house changed when he, you know, the husband and wife wanted a little bit better view. They changed the position so that corner of the house is two feet close to the road. They want him to tear his home down. Oh. So the, the premise is, is what it is. It, it's, it's very clear. If you're not what this town wants, mm -hmm. if you're not pure white, if you're not Roman Catholic, if you're not heterosexual, mm -hmm. if you're not this, that, and a third, they're going to eradicate you. Mm -hmm. Right now, here comes Daniel. <laughs> yes. Right. We got yeah. all these. You know, my family's a mutt. I got a little bit of everything. Look at all the people here. All different colors. Yes. All different races. Yep. This is offensive to the town. Right. Mm -hmm. They're driving by, cringing, saying all the racial slurs, having all those radicalized ideological views, like on what's here. But, I mean, we took an oath, right? Yep. You did. Yep. I did. Mm -hmm. So we got to stay strong. Got to hold the line. So no, I yeah, I find that. Uh, yeah, I do find it fascinating. The one thing I did notice in all the news articles against you is they never did try to say white supremacists, though. Right. That's usually an angle that they love to play when it, anyone's holding a, you know, a right. firearm sure. in their hand. So, sure. So they, that definitely at least was not played against you. But, the, you know, the, they're like, oh, this, this crazy, crazy guy. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's – it's. What, I mean, what I see here is uh, you've got uh, probably uh, 100 people plus. Um, definitely uh, the, the mix of people is uh, – well, I mean, I'd say it's proportional to uh, demographics to what we might sure. see in Vermont. But yeah, no, I see uh, I, the first person I interviewed was an African-American man. I right. see an uh, African-American woman over there. So this is not a race thing. Right. This is, I mean, you're Jewish yourself. Uh, I, so. I, yeah. And, I, and, I, and, and, and what, what it is, is that it, it, it equates to this, is that we shouldn't even have to worry about this. Yeah. Right. No, no. You shouldn't come to my gate and be like, hey, I'm pure white Roman Catholic. Let me in. I mean, yeah. No, right. Did you serve with other people? Uh, oh yeah, everyone different colors, creeds, religions, right. lack thereof. So, so that is the small world that Paul Letters are living in, right? The, you know, they may go as far as Connecticut or New Jersey, and that's like another country to them. Yeah. So, cleansing, ethical cleansing, cultural cleansing, relig religious cleansing, is the common denominator here. They've been successful. If you look at their latest 
um, advocacy, since 1872, they've been keeping this community exactly what they want until I came. Right? right. So now that the most dangerous guy in the state of Vermont is in their community and, you know, all this other rhetoric is spewed that is just putting Paul on the map. Uh, yeah. No, I know that uh, I saw you have an AP guy here. I heard yep. that New York Times was here earlier mm -hmm. today. Uh, I'm, I'm sure some other ones were, were, were here as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, you have my camera, which is probably going to be the only unedited yeah. uh, camera, you know, uh, that will be put out. Like everything right. I'm filming. Uh, the only edits that will be done will be uh, not even for, for brevity. Uh, it'll be for um, just. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Fine. you're fine. You're uh, fine, kiddo. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there's like no edits. Like, it's all going to be exactly what, sure. what you said. Sure. Uh, there, n nothing crazy there. Um, and, but I guess that's really, uh, I just wanted to kind of catch up with you yeah. there. I mean, you know, I know that your footage, you know, I've had people call me from the Washington Post and other. You know, people are looking at your lens because one, like you didn't know me. You right. called me up and I said, come here. Yeah. Right. So I didn't ask, like, I didn't do, are you this? Are you this? Are you mm -hmm. that? So, you know, we're, we're trying to formulate a culture now yeah. more than ever yep. that we all need to bind together. Yeah. Right. We all need to bind together and fight this because if it can happen to me, it can happen to you mm -hmm. or anyone else. Right. Yeah. And. If the, if the procedure is set to make you successful only to be retracted when you become successful, what's the point of that? Yeah, and speaking of things retracted, I heard, uh, I overheard you talking to some folks that uh, you said uh, that power has been cut to the facility, internet Correct. has been cut to the facility, Correct. Uh, has water as well. No, um, I'm, on, I'm on a well here and um, uh, you know, the well's the problem. They cut uh, Richard Hewlett, he paid someone to come and cut the phone line in the cable yep. line. The Vermont State Police are involved with it now. We app They caught and apprehended the individual that did it. And now we're hoping that there's gonna be prosecution because you, I can't go on your land and start with equipment and doing stuff to your land without your verbal permission or yep. some, some type of judicial directive. Yeah. You can't go and tell somebody, go do this, that, and a, and a third to someone else's land. Mm -hmm. Make sense? It makes perfect sense, right. man. No, no, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, hey, Daniel. No. All right, guys. So um, had to leave. Uh, I had to leave around three. Um, it's about a little bit later than that now. I'm driving back, and um, so it's a very interesting event. So you had the New York Times there. You had the Associated Press there. You had Fox News there. Uh, there was another uh, media organization there at some point that I missed, um, and then there was me, and it was very interesting. Um, I won't show the footage because I anyone who requested me that I do not show footage of them, I will 100% honor that. Fox News I thought was interesting, the, uh, the woman who was there reporting on it, you know, doing the journalism. She was very interested to meet me at first, then when she found out that uh, I was filming, uh, she didn't really want to talk to me at all any anymore after that. Uh, I guess I think that the video that I did before is not unknown to the media and the content that I produce is probably scary to said media even if um, you know even if it's your uh, conservative news whatever. Um, so that's fine and uh overall it was a very interesting day just some just some thoughts to put out other than than that that there was the media uh very much present there um there was probably i'd say about 50 to 100 people there at any given time um you know it was kind of just a a rainy dreary day but uh you know everyone brought food and people were generally just, uh, you know, just eating food, talk and have a good time. And uh, there were some firearms being shot, pistols and rifles when I left. Um, I actually had invited a few people to, to come with me and uh, they're probably still there shooting right now, having a good old time. Um, so that was fun. Um, one thing that it was really interesting to note was uh, just how 
multicultural and diverse the event was the people there and uh, versus the the people that are coming against uh, Daniel um, and the Slate Ridge community so so basically here's the deal Daniel is Jewish his wife is Jewish his family is Jewish um, and also they invite brown people there. Oh my God, people of color with guns. Woo, can't have that in our great white North Vermont. So that's really actually what a lot of is in there. And I don't know how much of that I have on video of uh, discussions about things that have happened, such as dealings with, uh, uh, they've even had KKK in uh, KKK uniform come onto his property. Um, one of the town selectmen is KKK. Uh, there's there's a lot of bad people involved with the government of uh, Paulette, Vermont. Uh, like one guy, I think it was like a police chief or something, uh, is uh, like a pedophile or suspected pedophile in New York. Like so, there's some there's some uh, bad bad folks in charge of government, and they're totally cool with that there. So basically, what what it is is uh, you had this guy come from out of town and. He, uh, he brings people of the wrong color uh, and the wrong faiths into uh, their place, uh, into their, their nice little white community. And uh, so that's interesting to note. Um, and this was an awesome, uh, you know, pro, pro 2A uh, event. Like I said, there's some people shooting with some pretty cool uh, hardware there. I got some on footage, some I didn't. Um, you know, I interviewed uh, the guy who does the, the Cerakote. Uh, the Mandalorian gun's pretty cool. Um, it was a really interesting event to meet those people because they were all just very chill, very nice people, and none of this, uh, none of this matches what the mainstream media uh, has put out, like uh, the Vermont Digger. Um, so I, I think actually we should ask the Vermont Digger how many Nazis uh, they have on their staff. So um, maybe I'll call up Vermont Digger and ask them that. Um, you know, that, that would be interesting. And you know, maybe ask the town, how many uh, Klansmen do they have uh, you know, as town selectmen? We know there's at least one. Um, it's always good to when you get to come out and do these stories and, and see, really see what's going on. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, a journalist. I'm I'm just a YouTuber with a camera, and and this is where technology is so great because we can come out with a camera, and it's a, a great weapon uh, against other narratives that would otherwise be controlled by by the media. You know, so now I got to get back, and I have to edit this video uh, and get it out there. Um, and I've got a lot of photos too. So these, these thoughts that are my closing thoughts may end up actually being my opening thoughts. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to edit this yet. But there was a lot of, of uh, really nice people. It, it, like I said, it was diverse. You know, there's some more developments that have happened there. And you'll be able to see that in the video. But essentially... Uh, the whole the town is just trying to prevent him from being able to build anything on his site. You'll see that in the interview with Daniel. Um, I interviewed uh, I interviewed um, the Vermont State Militia, their spokesperson. Um, there's a bunch of other people I talked to who I didn't film. You know, I was there for for several hours or three hours on site, and I, I definitely could have probably filmed more, but. Uh, I wanted to actually interact with these people as well and talk to these people. And sometimes it's kind of hard to do when you're just behind the camera. Um, people are very much willing to talk when you don't put a camera in their face. So it's very difficult at the same time to really take uh, the experience I had and give it to you all just because I couldn't share with you everything because not everyone wanted to be recorded. And I understand, you know, people want want their privacy respected. 
Um, I, I had multiple, multiple people just simply didn't want to be on camera, and that's fine. But those same people, though, keep in mind, were like, hey, man, I don't want to be on camera, but but I really, I know what you're here for, I know what you're doing, and I really appreciate it. So um, so that was that was pretty cool um, for, for the most part, what was going on there. Uh, so once again, you know, I had a great time, and if this ends up being the, the opening video, then um, stay tuned. And if this ends up being the closing part, thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, one more thing. I wore the goon sweater out there, guys. I wore the goon sweater, which is available at the link below to crypto fashion slash PCP media. And then you can find the link for the goon sweatshirt or t-shirt. You can get it in several different colors. Uh, this thing is, is awesome. It's uh, definitely the most popular design we have by far. But um, you know what? I should probably start driving safely and get this camera out of my face. Thank you. Thank you. Either stay tuned for what's coming up or thanks for watching. Deuces.